Whether you have a large yard or a very small balcony, today's video is for you. Hi, it's Marcy Ziv, artist and DIY enthusiast. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you the process of transforming ordinary objects, some found, some thrifted, and others gifted, into exciting works of art for your home and garden. Let's get started. Recycling a bowling pin into garden art is a fantastic way to repurpose materials and add a unique touch to your outdoor space. Finding an old bowling pin is very easy. You can often find them at thrift stores, garage sales, or bowling alleys. Or you may even have a friend, like I did, my friend Josh, gave me three of his. So the first thing we're gonna start doing is we're going to mix this up thoroughly so that's all a one color. Using garden themed silicone molds, I filled them with epoxy and designed my bowling pin as a bas relief sculpture. Using borders of various widths, I began designing the pin at the neck working down. I filled the body of the pin with various sizes of sunflowers, as well as two sizes of butterflies. Smooth out the bottom of the pin so it stands properly. At the top, I finished with one simple large butterfly. I'm using some cut straws here, some drinking straws, plastic. So it's not gonna stick to our epoxy. And I'm positioning the butterfly exactly how I want it. I am a huge fan of using cobalt blue glass water bottles in my garden. They look so beautiful amongst my plants and my flowers nestled in there. Simply put a rebar that matches the opening of your glass bottle and put it in with a hammer, voila, and you've got yourself a little sculpture. Kind of glistens in the sun and it's just a little conversation piece. These happen to be from Saratoga water, which is a water that I happen to enjoy as well. So it's kind of a bonus, right? Zero cost, zero waste. Bedding the rebar is very easy. Either use a vice grip or place one end under your foot and manipulate at the other end to desired position. For this project, we're going to be taking some of the coconuts that I found on the ground. And the squirrels had already done my job for me by hollowing the interiors out. And so they did a great job, I gotta tell you. Nick tried its finest. And what I did is I took a drill and drilled two holes in here. because I really feel like the, the orchid needs some kind of space to kind of breathe in there. And also if any moisture uh, gets in, I want to be able to um, to drain well. So I'm gonna take my orchid and put it in here. And I first did take some of my moss out. I don't want that all in there. So a little too wet. I'm gonna carefully drill through this side because this is how I'm going to hang it. You could also support it, let's say with um, a few hooks like so, like little eye hooks, whoops, um, and put some wire in there, or you could do like a little macrame hanger but I am going to do it this way. So if you don't have any power tools or such, you, this is a great way of doing it. And that's how I'm going to hang it. Put in some coconut core. Give the guy a little bed. And then. I'm gonna actually leave some of his roots coming out of here. Let me get my attachment.
This main orchid stem is hooked on to the orchid stick here and the copper wire is being brought around the stick to keep it in place and to keep some stability to the orchid. And then we're gonna simply wrap it around and make a loop. So with the copper wire, I simply bent it with my fingers in place and looped it around and we'll go out and hang it in a tree or you can hang it in your house. What I enjoy about this when I see the copper wire is that the patina will blend well with nature and it looks like it's part of the arrangement. I have a question for you. What do you get when you have a couple bags of hardened concrete or mortar? That's right. You get a little sculpture in your garden. Zero waste, zero cost. Looks like a mini Stonehenge. In this project, I took various orbs such as softballs, tennis balls, and styrofoam balls and decluttered my tool closet with various amounts of screws and nails, put them in using E6000 and simply inserted them on top of a piece of rebar and put them in the ground. And using various paints I also had on hand, we painted them different colors. These have been out here for about a year and a half in the hot sun and they're actually holding up pretty well. Onesie sandal either do a sandal or a shoe, hook it up to your tree. Mine's on an oak with a little bit of Spanish moss. And voila, a creative planter is born. These are more examples of shoes. Here we created a gazing ball and it's using the same method as the bowling pin in this very video using epoxy and leftover bits and pieces of mosaics from other jobs, we create a really beautiful sphere. This is weatherproof, it's durable, and it's very colorful and it makes a great piece of art. It makes a great addition to your walkway or anywhere that you want in the garden. Here I made use of a swinging hanging chair. It had a beautiful little cushion in there and it was so fun to sit in. However, it became more of a menace as the handles started falling apart. So what does any good gardener and artist do? We make a hanging succulent basket. Black plastic mushroom containers, as well as a 3 8 inch rope, which was purchased at the Home Depot, was used to make this beautiful orchid arrangement that's hanging in my kitchen. The rope was hot glued into place, wrapped around the mushroom container. Holes were put inside in the corners to suspend the container with. And this is actually the same rope as the 3 8 inch. It was just divided. This is just one of the plies. I also have three holes on the bottom to support any drainage that comes out. But this is absolutely gorgeous. And what a, what a wonderful way to reuse this plastic that would ordinarily turn and go into the trash heaps. While we're over here, I'm gonna show you this other container that I have. And I actually have a video on this and I'll leave it up above in a link. This is a nursery pot that was repurposed using air dry clay and fondant molds that I purchased off of Amazon. Now it supports my beautiful Christmas cactus awaiting some blooms for the next couple months here. And how beautiful is that? Another plastic gone to a wonderful repurposing. Here is a very unique and artistically designed planter. Simply taking an old terracotta pot, I covered it with E6000 glue and bits and bobs from my jewelry stash, as well as a beading components. And this is, I guess you'd call it a memory vessel. Here is a Jean-Paul Gaultier perfume bottle that I attached a dog head to. 
sculpted that out of epoxy and there's sayings and all types of things I really had not the heart to throw out and really had didn't want to throw them out all these little bits and pieces and there's old plates and things that are just special things that my kids gave to me and together using a good strong adhesive you can create your own memory vessel very special Creating a beautiful bird feeder for your special friends is a wonderful way of giving plastic water bottles a second use or any type of plastic bottle. And this virtually required no tools except I did use a glue gun to make these holes down here. And this is an orchid stick. This is a leftover piece of copper wire that I made by just simply doing some doohickeys here and making little circles and a little handle so it can hang. And virtually so easy to clean for hygiene purposes, as well as easy to fill. You're going to enjoy watching those gorgeous creatures come and feed from your yard. Just fill it with some fantastic goodies. When I first bought my home, I had a lot of these old pavers lying around. Slowly but surely, I've been converting them into artistic works of art. Here is one of them, and using leftover pieces of tile from other jobs, I assembled a little Broadway boogie woogie on my pathway using glue that can go outside and the tiles, I created a wonderful little work of art. Now slowly but surely and patiently, I need about 25 more done. Eventually, the pathway will be filled with one of a kind pavers just like this. Of course, no garden is complete without artistically designed wind chimes. Here we're using my signature cobalt blue glass. I'll leave a link above so that you can go and make your own. I show you a complete tutorial on how to cut the bottle as well as assemble the wind chime. Here's an example of a glass bottle I took and put some remnants from mosaics, little bits and bobs, platters and such, broke them up with little gemstones from the Dollar Tree, as well as other craft stores, and inverted it and installed it on a base which is made of concrete, and that is nothing more than a yogurt container or a cottage cheese container, which was filled with concrete. And that is a thrifted plate from Goodwill a couple of rocks and there you've got a nice little bird bath or a butterfly landing. It's a wonderful garden accent amongst your flowers. This piece has got to be my personal favorite. At one time, this was a mannequin, dirty, dusty, and really in great need of a bath that was stuck in my shed. And one day I got inspired and I thought, wow, this would be a great planter. And an idea was born. The dress was inspired by Roberto Cavalli. I love his couture. And the Tillandsia is super because it's a great plant. It doesn't need any soil, doesn't need any water because they're air plants. What a perfect combination. Snugged away in this corner of the garden, I have a thrifted easel. Now, can you imagine somebody threw this out on the side of the road, but I scored it. I was so excited. I have a red fiberglass star that I had made quite some years ago, and I really had no room to put it in my house and what a perfect spot in the garden, nestled away in the butterfly plants and the trees. It looks so beautiful. This is a great opportunity to clean up your cupboards and take those onesie cups and platters and put them together using a good exterior bonding agent and use that as a wonderful bird feeder. It's hanging from a shepherd's hook with rope and wow, do these birds love it. And I've even seen a squirrel or two in there. Have a go at it. 
that is it for now. I do hope today's video gave you some inspiration to create your own Shangri-La, your own piece of paradise in your backyard and create with intention and have fun doing it. Until we meet again, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.